I think you know many things about enzyme by now, so I can. I also uh, think that I can move a bit faster. You can see enzyme. So enzyme, whenever enzyme reacts, you know the enzyme. This enzyme has a uh, active site. So you know the active site. The enzyme, any enzyme has got an active site. So an active site has teeth. Uh, what is that teeth? You already know. And this active site, the enzyme, any enzyme will bind the substrate here. And in 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 a moment, it will make a enzyme substrate complex. And then after enzyme substrate complex, in the enzyme product complex will be formed. So enzyme and substrate, when substrate binds in enzyme binds substrate, it will form enzyme substrate complex, and it will form enzyme product, enzyme and product. So this is how enzyme uh, goes. So first substrate will bind, then substrate will convert into product, and pro pro product will dissociate from the enzyme. Now you can see this uh, the model that has been proposed. How does this enzyme and the substrate react? Uh, has been given two model. So this is a traditional model, lock and key model. So it proposed that actually this enzyme is like a lock. Enzyme is a like lock, and then substrate has key. Substrate is like key. So this substrate will actually substrate will go and feed this lock. So this is a rigid template model. It was proposed before, but the um, when evidence was were collected, then they found that this is this is not true. Rather, enzyme is not does not have a fixed like slot of uh, lock. It does not have fixed slot. So what does have what happens is when the substrate come together, when this enzyme binds substrate, it will be the the slot will change. And this is called induced fit model. So this substrate induces enzyme. This substrate induces enzyme to change its, its conformation. So this is valid model. So whenever you see enzyme binding a substrate, enzyme changes its conformation, its shapes. You can see enzyme changing its shape. So you have to memorize enzyme is a very dynamic molecule. It changes shape when it binds to um, substrate. You can see this is a key lock model given by Fisher. So this is a lock, this is key, so it will fit exactly. But it is, this is induced fit model. So you can, this actually enzyme follow this model. So you can see this is substrate is constant. It is uh, not flexible, but when substrate binds here, you can see this is, this is the uh, lock will modify. As substrate approach, it, the, the, the cleft in the enzyme will be modified, active site will be modified and this, is cut induced because this substrate induces this and then fits that is why it is called induced fit model so this is model how enzyme bound this so, so let's talk about most awaited thing enzyme kinetics so enzyme kinetics as i have told you kinetics means speed enzyme is speed kinetics means speed so here you can see the we are this is a formula you can see we are talking about speed this is velocity and this is called velocity maximum velocity so this is enzyme kinetics means study of speed. How speed of enzyme is affected by substrate. So this is nothing but a, a curve between, you will see a curve between velocity and substrate. This is enzyme kinetics, a very easy. If you remember, it is a very easy. So how substrate changes the sp speed of an enzyme, that study of that is called enzyme kinetic study. So relationship between velocity of reaction and substrate concentration, easy. You don't have to. And this is actually given by michaelis menten equation, MM equation you can remember. And this is michaelis menten equation. How will you remember michaelis menten equation? It is very easy. Velocity is equal to velocity, V max. So it's, there is no confusion. And then what happens when you put substrate above and then put substrate below. And below you add one more thing, K. So this makes a formula. This is called michaelis menten equation. Actually, this equation is derived. And derivation is not important for you. Just memorize this structure, this formula. So V is equal to, remember, V max. And then add substrate above and substrate below. And below, you add one more thing. That is called constant, here. So will you memorize this formula? It is very important to memorize this formula. Yes? Yes, we can memorize it. It's very easy formula. 
you don't have to memorize anything velocity and substrate so it is a formula between velocity and substrate so you write velocity and then you write v max then substrate because it's velocity and substrate above and below both substrate and below you add one more thing constant add below add constant that that is the this is the formula so you will understand easily you will memorize it now we will talk this this the same formula we will see the formula in we translate this formula into curve so this when you translate this formula into curve it will you will get like this so this curve is called memorize this curve also for the time being so you memorize this curve also this curve is called hyperbolic curve hyperbolic curve so when something goes straight and then it will be stagnant this is called hyperbolic curve so my curve of michaelis menten equation is hyperbolic curve what happens what does this curve says is when you increase like substrate concentration in initially so velocity will increase proportionately for a certain time then what happens as you increase substrate so what will happen this velocity will will actually will not increase proportionately slowly it will what happens it will be stagnant as you increase the substrate it will be stagnant why does it happen so let's say you have three in let's say you have 10 enzymes in your body in here in a, in a system you have like in a, in your cell you have 10 enzymes imagine then you have a substrate you have substrates so enzyme and substrate substrate you have, you also have then you, substrates so what happens enzyme will bind to substrate you until the 10 substrate it binds 10 substrate so 10 enzyme will bind 10 substrate so what happens after it all the enzyme occupies the substrate what will happen there is no enzyme left to bind to and that is why when you even if you increase the substrate the reaction rate will not increase i repeat again so listen carefully you have 10 enzymes and you have 10 substrate now the 10 enzyme will bind 10 substrate okay 10 enzyme will bind 10 substrate but do you think there is more enzyme to bind substrate no there is no more enzyme to bind substrate if there is no enzyme to bind substrate then what will happen there is no enzyme so velocity will be stagnant after certain concentration of substrate even if you increase the concentration of substrate velocity will not increase did you understand this yeah if substrate concentration is high so velocity will be maximum velocity that's it so we will actually from this curve and equation we will have to memorize this three equation three function if you memorize and it is easy i will make you understand how uh, you have to memorize and it is uh, it can be concluded from the equation and and this curve as well so i will conclude this from equation and curve so you can see km is equal to first first actually first statement defines constant this constant michaelis maintain constant k km is equal to substrate concentration at half v max this is km 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 is the substrate concentration this is substrate concentration this is substrate concentration at which this is half v max you can see this is half v max so this is km is a substrate actually km is nothing but substrate concentration and which substrate concentration at half max velocity so this is definition of km now you have to remember two things two more things second thing second uh, conclusion is at very low substrate concentration at very low substrate con concentration you can see velocity is proportional to substrate can you see straight line here at very low substrate concentration you can see straight line that means velocity is proportional to substrate concentration and if you go very high here if you go here so at very high substrate concentration if substrate is very high so what you see is velocity here if you draw a curve here so velocity here is equal to 
Vmax. So these three conclusions you have to memorize. This is this is enzyme kinetics. You have to what you need to memorize this formula, which is very easy. This graph between substrate and velocity, this is which is also very easy. And you have to memorize third thing is three conclusions. Will you will you able to memorize? Yeah. They are very easy things. And if you memorize this curve from this curve, you can easily conclude this thing. Now, let me conclude these three conclusions through formula. Now, you can see if, so first is the definition of KM. If Michaelis maintain constant, what is the Michaelis maintain constant? When substrate concentration, it is, uh, my KM is equal to substrate concentration, where at value Vmax half Vmax. You can see when you make substrate and Km equal. So you can see below there is Km and substrate. It will add into two. So Km will be replaced by substrate. I will I will add here. So this is Vmax. Okay, Vmax. This is substrate concentration. And this is Km plus substrate concentration. If Km is equal to substrate concentration, so can we write replace this km with substrate concentration so we can replace this with now this substrate concentration you can see two substrate means two substrate concentration see this is very simple mathematics you don't need to understand you don't have to worry you it is easily understood uh, you can understand it very easily so substrate substrate gone now you can see v max by half so this is how Km is defined. So Km is a substrate concentration. Km is a substrate concentration at which velocity is Vmax. So this is the first. Now, if substrate is very, very, very low, then Km. What will happen? What will happen? So if substrate is very low, then Km. What will happen is this is Vmax, substrate concentration, then Km plus substrate concentration. What will happen? So Vmax and then this because substrate is very, very low. So it is negligible in comparison to Km. We can write Km directly. So if you add, if you add 1 to 100, so it is near about 100 only. And if you take it 1000, if you add one to thousand, it's near about thousand only. So that is what here we can take. So Km is equal to when you, because this substrate is very low, that means this is Km. So now what have, what do we get is this. We get is because this both are constant. So you, we get this. Velocity is proportional to substrate. So at very low concentration, velocity is proportional to substrate. And third conclusion. So when substrate is very, very low, when substrate is very, very low, again, you can devise this formula yourself. Vmax by substrate concentration, Km plus. Now what will happen? This will become, because this is very low, so this will become negligible in comparison to this. That means when substrate concentration is very high, then that time what will happen so above is substrate this multiplication and then this will become about zero in comparison to the very negligible substrate substrate so this both substrate will be gone you can see this is these are equal so velocity is equal to p max so remember this three conclusion so will you memorize this three conclusion if you memorize let's do this question so consider that consider a reaction that can be catalyzed by one of the two enzymes okay there are two enzymes a enzymes and b enzymes okay the a enzymes has km this is the km value for a this a enzyme and this is km value for b enzyme sorry this is km value for b enzyme and this is vmax for a vmax for b so now Solve these three questions. At concentration, at this concentration, 5 into 10 to the 10 to the power minus 6 m. So it is uh, like mini mole potential. M is mole. 
okay it is mole so this is 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 mole substrate the velocity of reaction catalyzed by enzyme a will be so compare with the km and answer the question based on that three conclusion that we derived This is substrate concentration here. Substrate concentration is 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 mole for enzyme A. And this Km for enzyme A is also 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 mole. So substrate here you can see substrate concentration and Km is equal. So what would be the answer here at this concentration? It's V V max is twenty. Twenty. So it is when the substrate concentration is equal to K M. Option A, sir. It will be option A. Yeah, it will be v, half V max. The velocity at this substrate concentration when it equals to K M is half V max. Okay, so answer is A. Now, let's the same same way. Let's do this seven question. So see if the Km is sorry this uh, substrate concentration is this for B for B if substrate concentration is this for B if substrate concentration is this will be so, A. So what is the velocity? A. B. This is you can see the V max for B is A. B. V max for this is V. V max for B is 30. Yeah, so it will be a B. B, yes, B. And then at a concentration, this at this concentration of A. So A substrate concentration A. You have what? What is the this minus four? So what will be the answer for this? So you know the Km for B is Km for A is this. So this is very high in comparison to Km. Hundred times because Km is minus six. So this is hundred times. This substrate concentration is hundred times more than Km. 100 times more than K. So this is K. Substrate concentration is 100 times more than K. Can you see this? Can you see here? This is the substrate concentration here. And this is K. So you can see minus 6. And this is minus 4. This is 100 times more, isn't it? Tell me. Yes, sir. So the answer yes, will be C. Will be D. C. So, C, this is V max. If substrate concentration is very high, and C, sir. then KM, KM, so the velocity will be equal to V max. Equals to V max directly. Okay. So this is the answer. C. Okay, C is the answer. So you got that? I want you to go and revise this, okay? Yes, this is logical but very easy. If you memorize these three concepts, these three concepts, problem will be solved easy. Okay? And the question is based on this two. One, this sorry, doctor, this. I Sorry, doctor, I had a question about the equation itself. The uh, the michaelis menten equation? Yes. So for that one, there's like the two substrates in the numerator and the denominator, are they different? Because shouldn't they? Like, no, they are not different. different. They are not different. Okay, they're this, the same, right? This, okay. they, they are the same. They are the same. Okay. So they are the same, but this substrate is with Km. 
so okay. that is why it is very easy to memorize it is the actually this equation is represents the curve a curve curve between velocity and substrate okay velocity the relation between velocity and substrate so you write velocity is equal to velocity which velocity max you add and then you add some substrate above also and below also same substrate but you add km here below. and that makes micris maintain equation but a very easy equation to memorize and this is a curve a very easy curve to memorize y axis something look like y velocity y axis look like y and then x axis is substrate x axis pronounce like s x pronounce like s so this is substrate x axis substrate y axis this did you understand this very well no it is not that difficult you can go and you can revise you will understand them okay so you understood this now let's see so this is km value this is km you can see this km value is constant of any enzyme this is michaelis maintain constant is constant for any enzyme km is constant for any enzyme this value is constant for any enzyme so we need to when we need when you want to compare two enzyme enzyme one with enzyme two how do you compare you you will compare with the their characteristics and this km is the characteristics so you will compare km between these two enzyme so how do we compare this km of this two enzyme so it's very difficult if you want to compare this two km with this formula and that is why we will change this formula little bit so see how do we measure determine this km we determine this km this way every in every enzyme has a characteristic km that i have told you determination of km is important for comparison that also i have told you and now determination of km via michaelis maintain equ equation is very difficult so that is also i told you now so how do we uh, determine we determine this km value we, we compare this km value through this curve called line weaver burke plot and double reciprocal uh, reciprocal plot you don't get scared this is nothing but this is uh, this plot is derived from michaelis maintain equation itself just what we did we invert we revert this we do this uh, equation upside down and then what we get is line weaver burke plot so let's see how do we get line weaver burke plot so first what we did do is we actually measure we this is a laboratory experiment we actually measure a six five to six velocities we actually measure five to six velocities. there are method to measure velocity don't worry about it we can measure velocity of any enzyme we have that uh, method in laboratory this is very easy method there now five to six oh velocity five to six velocities are measured by using five to six uh, concentration and after we take this five one so after we take this sample one where sub, substrate concentration one then you will get a velocity one two you get substrate concentration two you will get velocity two the same way you will do up to five to six here yeah, substrate con substrate concentration six you will get a velocity of six now if you if you have got this type of value now what you do you don't directly put this substrate as s1 s here and velocity rather than doing this we what we do is we take the invert of this we invert this we take one by velocity we plot one by velocity and one by substrate here when we do this we will get a straight line so how do we get a straight line i'm i'm going to tell after this slide so we plot this one by reciprocal of velocity and reciprocal of substrate concentration on this graph the same way at in place of substrate concentration you reciprocate this substrate we you put one by s at the velocity at y axis you put one by v and then you will get a straight line curve this is called line weaver burke plot and line weaver burke plot is also called 
double reciprocal focal flow because we both are reciprocal y axis is reciprocal and x axis is also reciprocal so reciprocal of michaelis menten curve that is why this is called just a double reciprocal curve and line weaver bark plot we get a name from scientist now let's see this so michaelis menten equation is inverted to get line weaver bark plot so you can see this michaelis menten equation you already know so we in you already know michaelis menten equation velocity is equal to v max v max so actually i will use a bit liberty of writing v max above so v max like this and then substrate you write here and then below you write km plus substrate concentration now we revert this we invert this so what will happen this velocity we get is 1 by v and then km and substrate concentration this km plus it will go up and then v max and substrate concentration come down now we simplify again it so what we do this is in plus so you can divide simplify this this way so km by v max s and this so after simplification what you get is this v max 1 by v is equal to km by v max so you take v max common you pull this v max from this now 1 by substrate concentration plus 1 by v max so you get this so this is actually formula you must have studied somewhere it is formula very similar to y is equal to this is a constant you read right is a and this is on x axis so ax and this is y axis represents y axis but it is a constant ax plus b so this we get equation this equation we get this equation and this equation is equation for straight line so this equation is straight equation of straight line with some y intercept so this is a straight line equation we get this equation after inverting this now we can draw this whole chart here you can see here. so we will get this equation we will get this formula we can for draw this whole equation into this so you can see here so uh, what change it y axis becomes there y axis was b here it became 1 by b there y axis was substrate concentration here y axis becomes 1 by substrate concentration so very simple things you don't have to worry i will write here so this become a straight line okay let me okay it is so this is this is y axis y axis becomes 1 by v this is x axis x axis become 1 by that is why double reciprocal procal flow now you can see so v max will come here somewhere here and actually v max is this where this cut so this is 1 by v max where this straight line cuts this y axis it is 1 by v max where intersect where this straight line intersect y axis this becomes 1 by v max and can the this x axis this x axis become 1 by km this part become 1 by km if km is high so this will be small if km is low this will be large that's it but this becomes 1 by km so did you understand will you memorize easily this will you memorize this easily yes will? i guess yes yes doctor yes so just oh, imagine close your eyes imagine this graph and put that graph into your memory so every thing will be taken care of then thereafter if you memorize this curves so i want you to memorize this curve later you will easily understand this is there is nothing much big bigger things to understand this these are very easy things now you can see this is you can now how, how do we get this 1 by km you can easily get 1 by km how do you get 1 by km because you know if you have studied this is a theta so tan theta is equal to tan theta is equal to p by b the so tan theta is slope slope so this is p by b this is perpendicular this is base what is perpendicular here 1 by v max 
is perpendicular. What is base here? So base is this. So we don't know, for example, we don't know base, base, but tan theta we know. What is this tan theta? Here, theta is this slope, and then you know this slope is k n by v max. C is the slope. A is the slope here. The k n by v max is the slope. So k n by v max. So it is mathematical. Even if you don't understand, no problem. If you understand, that's good. So v max. Just understand that this can be easily derived. So this b can is derived mathematically. Just understand that. So you, b max put here and here. So you cut v max v max. This becomes one by k. So that is how we get one by k. This k. That is how we get this segment as k. So if even if you don't understand, no problem. Just memorize this. This segment is one by k m. Actually, minus minus x is one by k m. You memorize this. This is one by v max. This p is one by v max. V is one by k m. That's what you need to memorize. If you memorize this, let's see this. Now, do this question. Identify everything. So what is a here? V. B. One, one, by B. B. one by B. Oh, one very good. B. What is B here? One, one by K M. One by K M. V max. V max. V max. V max. V max. V max. What is C here? K M. One by K M. One by K M. One by K M. What is B here? One by one S substrate. substrate. Yeah. One by S Wait. substrate. One by substrate concentration. Okay. When we put this substrate and this uh, big bracket, this becomes substrate concentration. Okay. Square bracket. When you put a square bracket around this, this this is representation of substrate concentration. So one by substrate concentration. Did you get that? No. So this. Uh, so this type of graph can be given and any of this, uh, okay, what is B in the graph can be asked like this. So what is the B in the graph? So you'll have to answer like that. Okay. Over okay. B max. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, what is A? I will write here some, some any, maybe like I will write it. What is, one I will write it here, X. One over. What is X here? Uh, one over X. Um, I'm sorry. One over, one B. over B. One so, over V. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you all understood. So this is double reciprocal plot. Now what what happens? This plot we can we will study enzyme inhibition. Then you will see you will be easily you will easily compare this Km. So what will happen if K, uh, you, Km of other enzyme changes? So it will the curve will rotate. So the Km you can find out easily find out this Km and this Km and compare to Km from this graph. And this is easy. This graph becomes easy to compare Km. So the most important function of this line weaver bark plot is what? What is Km? Determination of Km. So actually we did, we were talking about how do we determine Km. We determine Km through line weaver bark plot or other name is double reciprocal plot. So double reciprocal plot seems to be more meaningful but line weaver bark plot uh, word is more in use. Okay, common commonly used terminology is line weaver bark plot, and this double reciprocal plot is meaningful. Doctor, how they uh, how they test uh, their equations? So to, equation you don't see you don't have to derive equation. Just you have to have concept. Okay, how it is determined? I have already explained this. Yeah. Here is written. So substrate you measure a substrate take a substrate and measure velocity five to six velocity and then you plot that curve like this you plot that this curve like this one by velocity one by you will get this type of curve and then if you extend this curve so you the, the curve will point actually strike somewhere on the x-axis so you take this segment and you can easily from this segment you can easily measure the k value. okay 
and you can compare km value of other enzyme through this curve and just what is important for you to you, you need to memorize this so we will use this curve don't worry we will use this curve in enzyme inhibition so uh, we have class actually I, I wanted to take that sdl that is there tomorrow okay because last class we did, because of electricity we, we we were not able to take the class and we have course content left so uh, be present in tomorrow's sdl okay all right doctor i think in tomorrow's sdl we have a mandatory meeting with uh, the with the dr andy Not yeah we were told that we were going to have a mandatory meeting with him during sdl tomorrow i don't know how long it's going to be but i know it's there we can wait until after like so actually if this happens i will not be able to finish the course so i was not informed regarding that also i would have managed some different way we can uh, doctor we can stay today in break time if uh, the other students do not mind but uh, <laughs> They will have to take lunch, everyone has to take lunch. <laughs> yeah, we can eat while you're doing your lecture. Yes. Are you all okay with that? No. No, people will not be, we will not agree. Anyway, see, so we will try to finish as much as we can in those lectures only. So at least we will finish enzyme. The more important things I will cover, I will leave less important thing, okay? Doctor, you can record it for us. <laughs> I have that lecture, recorded lecture of previous session. So I will, is it no, okay? I mean, I mean, if they don't want. In Sir, the uh, we have all your recorded lectures on YouTube. So we can see those lectures. Yeah, I'll, I'll share the lecture of that uh, missing part. Okay. Yeah, yeah if you yes. I'll, I'll, Actually, I will share the lecture of that uh, uh, carbohydrate. Okay. Yeah. First part carbohydrate. Yeah. Then I will directly jump to second part. Today I will share the. Uh, first classification of carbohydrate, then I will jump to directly clinical part of carbohydrate. Okay, doctor, why you don't, uh, if you don't mind, and other student, why you don't, uh, if uh, I, we can, like some student can stay in break today, and uh, the other who do, uh, does not want, or do not want, it's they can it's like it's listen to recorder. Because I feel like you explain it very well for us. We we were like, I'm, I'm personally confused with some words. And now no, I understand it. Regarding, see, regarding enzyme, I will take enzyme because it is a difficult topic. Enzyme, I will take completely, OK? But carbohydrate is an easy topic. I will share first. I will share with you a uh, video, OK? If you, are, if you can understand, then it's OK. Otherwise, I will, I will make you understand. OK, thank you. Okay. The difficult part, I will take. Don't worry about it. So don't, um, let's not go for that lunch time, OK? Because uh, everybody will not agree, OK? So, because you are mature enough that is well so many people are and if anybody has questions they can just email you yeah, yeah, yeah they can email they can you can email that that will be okay okay so let's let's finish we will i will finish enzyme very nicely no problem with that difficult part i will finish very nicely this is very important also enzyme if you understand enzyme you will understand the core of biochemistry okay so let's start so there are two types of enzymes. So till now we did what we studied. We actually studied about the very basic type of enzyme. The very basic type of enzyme is called non-elasteric enzyme. Okay. The non-elasteric enzyme is the enzyme that actually have this type of Michaelis maintained curve. Okay. Michaelis maintained curve. Hyperbolic curve. So, but elasteric enzymes have different type of curve. I will tell you in just a moment. So you can see this. This is a curve of non-elasteric enzyme. This is hyperbolic. We have studied this. And this S-shaped curve, this S-shaped, sigmoid shaped, this is called sigmoid shaped curve. This curve is a curve for elasteric enzyme. So you have to memorize this very important fact. This is elasteric enzyme has this type of curve. Why does this enzyme has this type of curve? Because this type of enzyme are rate limiting enzyme. So when we studied our path, pathway, so at that time we will study about this 
rate limiting enzymes there are many rate limiting enzymes in every pathway there are one two rate limiting one or more than one rate limiting step for example in uh, glycolysis there are three three rate limiting steps rate limiting enzymes there are three rate limiting enzymes so these rate limiting enzymes follow this a particular type of curve they can be regulated and that is why this follow a very particular type of curve this is called allosteric curve and these all enzymes are allosteric enzymes so as i told you so enzymes has this part do you remember enzymes has this part this is called allosteric side do you remember yes doctor. yes allosteric side so this enzymes not all enzymes has this side okay there are few enzymes which has this side allosteric side those enzymes are actually called allosteric enzymes and these allosteric enzymes are rate limiting enzymes meaning that can be regulated not all enzymes are regulated these enzymes are regulated so the last property we talked about enzyme regulation so remember this all enzymes are not regulated there are only few enzymes in pathway that will be regulated so this is regulated through this allosteric site and the enzyme containing these allosteric site are called allosteric enzyme did you get that yes doctor and this allosteric enzyme will follow this type of curve sigmoid shaped curve so what does this mean so this means the substrate when you initially increase the substrate concentration the rate of reaction will not rise that uh, fast but after a certain point if substrate concentration is enough for, for that enzyme then what will happen then only uh, this enzyme will take a jump you can see take a jump and after it is saturated completely then there will be stagnation like you have seen before so this is the property of allosteric enzyme so allosteric enzyme requires a particular concentration to be functional so all rate limiting enzymes will not be functional if you, there is a little bit of glucose so there has to be optimal concentration of glucose to make a jump so this is rate limiting enzyme this is rate limiting enzymes are allosteric enzyme so we divide enzymes into two categories one is allosteric other is non allosteric enzyme so allosteric enzymes are generally all enzyme allosteric enzymes are have more than one protein more than one protein in enzyme this is called multimeric protein more than one protein chain not only one more than one so it will be a assemble of two three protein together so this is called allosteric so allosteric enzyme will all be structurally multimeric and this will follow this sigmoid shaped curve you can see now this enzyme can be regulated if feedback regulation then it will shift to right the so negative effect means feedback inhibition feedback inhibition the product this reactant will stimulate any reaction and product will inhibit so any product will inhibit through feedback inhibition enzyme inhibition and reactant will stimulate through feed forward stimulation okay so this feedback inhibitor will pull this curve to right and feed forward stimulation will pull this curve to our left so understand actually i will use this i will teach you same concept during hemoglobin during oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin in respiratory system so don't worry about this very much just understand allosteric enzyme has this sigmoid shaped cup and these are rate limiting enzymes rate limiting enzymes these are multimeric enzymes three things allosteric enzymes has sigmoid shaped cup these are multimeric enzyme these are rate limiting enzymes and they have they they have allosteric side that is why they are called allosteric enzymes so uh, doctor yes on, sir yes uh, on the test yeah. there was uh, they were looking they asked for a shape was it a uh, was uh, can you say hyperbolic shape is like okay. sigmoid shape so this is you can say this is you can see you can compare this two this is normal enzyme other enzyme can you see 
here. Yes. Can you see here? This yes. Is S this is S. This is hyperbolic. Okay. When it is like this, it is like J like cup. When you see a J like cup, inverted J like cup, it is hyperbolic cup. Okay. 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 And when you see a cup first going like this and then sudden jump, then again stagnation. So this is S shaped. You can see S. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Okay. This is sigmoid. You can okay. add sigmoid. Okay. So this I... is a sigmoid shape. You got that? Yes. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So this is illustrated. Just answer this question. Which of the following exhibit a hyperbolic cup when initial reaction velocity is plotted against substrate concentration? So you will not able to answer this question. I know when you study, uh, like when you study um, path pathway, then only you will be able to answer this question. That is why this type of question is asked in uh, USMLE. But you will not be because when you they they link everything with pathway. If you don't understand pathway, meaning isolated question from um, this enzyme will not come in USMLE. So, but basic understanding. If you don't understand, you will not be um, able to answer that question also. So this is for for that this class is for that purpose. Which of the following enzymes exhibit hyperbolic curve? When initial, that means which of the following is a non allosteric enzyme? So that means all are allosteric except one. So you can see this aspartate transcarbonyl, this is also a rate limiting enzyme. Rate limiting enzyme of pyrimidine synthesis. You don't worry about this pyrimidine synthesis pathway is there. Now, phosphofructokinase is rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis. This is also rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis. Pyruvate kinase is also rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis. Only one enzyme which is not rate limiting is this. So this is the answer. Okay, is the answer. All enzymes are rate limiting enzymes. So all rate limiting enzymes are allosteric enzymes. These allosteric enzymes are multimeric. This rate limiting enzymes has allosteric site because it is allosteric enzyme, it will have allosteric site, multimeric, and it will follow sigmoid shape. So these are the features of allosteric enzyme. So allosteric enzyme means rate limiting enzyme. So let's talk about regulation. We will start today. Uh, we have five minutes. We will talk about regulation a little bit. So enzyme activity can be regulated. You already last property. So we did three six property. Let me review that six property S3 and R3. What is S3? Speed, selectivity. So don't uh, lose the track. So why I'm repeating so that you will track everything. I'm actually revolving around this mnemonics only. Selectivity. Specificity. Specificity. And then? Reaction time. Yeah. Reaction site or active site regulation okay. regulation regulation and then what reaction condition so we did reaction condition we also did we also explained speed why speed is high we also explained specificity and we actually also explained selectivity what did we talk about selectivity? We talked about rigid model and flexible model about selectivity. Okay, so these three things we did and reaction site. We also explained reaction site. We did the anatomy of reaction site. What is there? Uh, coenzymes are there and then side chains are there. We did and regulation. We are we did reaction. We are going to talk about regulation last thing. So uh, if we talk about regulation, so our enzyme property of enzyme will be complete. Now enzyme, so which enzymes are regulated? Only few enzymes are regulated, rate limiting. Not all enzymes are regulated. That is also very important thing, okay? Not all enzymes are regulated. So enzyme activity can be regulated. That is enzyme can be activated or inhibited. So that rate, the rate of product formation respond to the ends of the cell, needs of the cell. So you can see the reactant will convert into product. So reactant generally we call it substrate. I'm telling it reactant. So reactant will change, convert into product. So cell needs a required amount of product. So product should not be very high also, very low also. 
in that condition what happens this enzyme is there if product becomes very high product will inhibit this reaction if reactant become very high this this in this stimulates reaction so reactant stimulate and product inhibit remember this reactant stimulate product inhibit this is called feed forward stimulation and this is called feedback inhibition so this is the principle of regulation the predominant principle of regulation this is predominant principle of regulation this is the predominant way of regulation and the short term regulation very immediate there are other regulation method also okay this is the regulation this is the regulation method regulated by reactant and product there are certain regulation other regulation method method that are regulated by hormones hormone regulated method okay there are reactant product regulated method and hormone regulated so hormone regulated method are intermediate intermediate regulation so we will talk about there are two one is phosphorylation dephosphorylation other is induction depression so let's see this so you can see short term regulation i have already described this the reactant and product will control this this is about uh, product reproduct will inhibit and reactant will stimulate now this is phosphorylation and dephosphorylation phosphorylation and de this both type of regulation this both type of regulation are under control of hormone control of hormone this is independent of hormone okay so this you can categorize this way you can categorize hormone dependent hormone independent but there are three main types you have to do allosteric regulation regulation of phosphorylation dephosphorylation and induction depression this is intermediate term this is long term so will you memorize just tell me this is the last slide of, of today's class yeah so first is allosteric regulation second is phosphor yes phosphorylation dephosphorylation addition of phosphate group or removal of phosphate group and induce and reduction induction induction and repression induction or repression induction and repression so memorize this three reaction regulation so in in metabolic